Hey Cootie Crew and welcome back to my channel. I recently decided to put some jewelry back into my very old, old piercing holes. Some were on the bottom of my lobe, some were at the top of my ear. They haven't had any jewelry in them most of the last three years. And sometimes when holes are go unused for a really long time, they start to look and feel closed up, even though sometimes they aren't. Uh, strap in for the teeniest, tiniest little stretching video ever, and I'll show you how I stretched open my old piercings to put some long-term jewelry in there. When your piercing doesn't have jewelry in it, it starts to kind of shrink up a little bit. The jewelry that I got for this is a 16 gauge size. It's pretty common to pierce at an 18 gauge size, and a 16 gauge is larger than that. And again, if you're if you haven't had jewelry in for a while, that hole is going to feel like it's smaller than an 18 gauge. As you can see here, I've had these two in for a while now, as well as this one on this side. The jewelry I got is from Urban Body Jewelry. I just decided to get a 16 gauge just because of the jewelry that I wanted, but there are 18 gauge sized similar jewelry in case you don't want to have as big of a stretch if you are to sort of stretch open an old hole. The flat backs like this are considered La Bray jewelry, so that it, that might help if you search that. And I'll go ahead and put the exact link to what I have in the description box. Here is what they look like up close. So they have uh, this post, a flat back, and then a little gem piece that screws into the top. And then the other thing I got was a 16 gauge taper, which is so super duper tiny, but I wanted a smooth transition. Part of the reason I wanted to definitely have these tapers was one, because I'm going up a size from what I do believe my ears were initially pierced at, and two, um, because the jewelry I'm putting in isn't pointed or gradual at all, it has like a very flat end. I didn't want to have to shove that through my ear and potentially injure it to put the jewelry in. So by using a taper, I'm able to stretch that existing piercing open enough to be able to put that flat post through without ripping, tearing, shoving, any of that. And there do exist 18 gauge tapers for this exact same purpose. The rest is very similar to a typical stretch if you're familiar with ear stretching. If you're not, what you do is you like warm up your ear with some warm water or maybe just after a shower just to get that skin a little stretchier than it might normally be. And then use some sort of, I use stretching balm again because I have this on hand. In the past I've always, I've also used coconut oil and almond oil for the same purpose. Make sure everything is clean, clean, clean. Your jewelry, your hands, whatever lubricant you're using, if you're using a taper, make sure that's clean. Put some of that stretching balm or lubricant on your ear where your jewelry is going to be going, as well as on that taper, or maybe even the jewelry that you're going to be using to stretch it open a little bit. And then gently, gently press that taper through your ear, starting with the smallest end. And what it's going to do is gradually open up your skin a little bit to the thicker end. So once it's at the thicker end, it's now open enough to be able to fit the same size jewelry through. So as long as your taper is the same size as the jewelry that you're going to be putting in, they should fit and just be able to switch one end for the other. Now, if you start getting any resistance, take it very slow because that means that maybe it's not as stretchable as you were hoping for, but do not force it if it's not going to happen. Both my lobes were really, really easy to stretch open just because, I mean, my lobe is used to being stretched. It's pretty soft up here, but the top of my ear was a lot more resistant. It wasn't painful. It was just, I had to actually apply pressure with my thumb to get it through. And once I had the first one, I tried to go to the second and it would not budge. And so I took that as a sign to back off. My ear might already be too swollen from stretching the other two. So I was gonna go back and try again later on a different day after my ear had calmed down and the swelling had gone down, which I did do a few days later and same thing, was not having it. So that's why I decided to put in these regular old piercings. These had a nice pointy end to them. And so I'll just keep these in for a while until my ear gets used to having jewelry in it at this size. And then I will go in and try again with the 16 gauge and some more of the same jewelry. Oh, and you'll notice here, a lot of 
the times if you haven't uh, had anything in and out of your piercing in a long time. All of that dead skin and skin oil builds up and that's what smells really gross. If, if you have earrings, you know what I mean. Sometimes you take your earrings out or you put ones in after a few weeks and it just smells nasty. That's what all that buildup is. One of these was just disgustingly full of that. Dude, it was so gross, but I knew it was gonna happen. I just didn't think it would be that much. So that's it. That's It's a really short video. I just wanted to share it in case it was helpful for people. So if it was helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you have a similar experience or tips on something like this, please go ahead and leave it down in the comment section. The Cootie Crew is an amazing community of people and are happy to help respond, listen, in case you guys have any questions. <sighs> Thank you, Cootie Crew, especially for hanging in there with me this past year. I really do appreciate you guys. You are keeping me going. And I'm working on uh, getting through this big, long backlog of videos. So as always, please leave any suggestions down in the comment box. And I might add it to the list as we start going through it. If you want to stay tuned for future videos, please subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time.